Hello viewers, Super GT here, Gran Turismo Action Group 3 around Brands Hatch. Let's get started. You can see there, I'm taking the fight to the Porsche. I'm driving the Aston Martin, British driver, British circuits, British car. This Brit here though, he's just going to give up completely. He doesn't really want to take part in the real penalty simulator. So that's a free position, starting sixth. And yeah, here we go then. Taking the fight to the Porsche. The 911, a very dominant car, as another of the Austrian there gets punted wide. I think the Frenchman in the lead has a penalty already. So the game living up to its name of the real penalty simulator. So the 911 seems to be the dominant car in Group 3. It has been for quite a while. It's not, you know, it's not massively OP, but it is it has an edge. So I thought, let's give it, a, let's give it a try in something different. The Aston Martin is a decent car. So up to fourth already. That's that's not a bad start. 14 laps. It's, it's the uh, it's race C. So we're going to have a strategy here on fuel and on tyres. Or well, just one stop in the in the middle of the race. I mean, it's the same strategy for everyone really. But there'll be some management, should I say, some tyre management, some fuel management. As the German head goes a little bit wide, coming through Sheen Curve, very easy to do that, a very difficult corner, very blind, blind entry, easy to run two wheels wide. Look up the inside into the final corner, and there's going to be a bit of contact, and we're going to go side by side, a bit of traction issues on the exit, still contact down the main straight, I've still got a nose alongside into Paddock Hill Bend, and it's more contact, we've touched so many times there. I think I'm just about going to get through yellow flag and second place is off. So somehow I've just jumped into second place. Going to pause it there. Have a look at this guy. Bins himself off the curb into the wall. Gets a penalty. Yeah, nice one. And so just to rub it in, you know, as if making a mistake isn't enough, you can just have a penalty as well. So nice stuff all round there from Gran Turismo. All fun and games. It's up to second, and the leader has a penalty. I don't know how big that penalty is, but he has one. So this might be a game where, or it might be a race where I just need to keep close, try and keep as close as I can to him, and then hopefully at the end I beat him because of the penalty. Coming through here, though, the lap three, Sheen Curve. Well, he's made a mistake. We we saw the German make a mistake here on lap one, and now the Frenchman's turn to do the same. Uh, clearly a lot worse this time though. I think he actually spun around, lost quite a lot of time. I think the gap was about four or five seconds. So now that gap's down to about one second. We'll try to keep up with him the best we can. Let's run around sector one into Paddock Hill Bend, breaking on the two board a little bit wide though. And just again on the power quite late as a result up the hill. Look for that orange piece of barrier on the left hand side. That tends to be a very good breaking point, and it does actually uh, carry across many games. Actually, I've noticed in live racing and Forza Motorsport, in in fact, um, that orange bar uh, barrier very very useful indeed. So already through the first sector, the Porsche pulling away. You can see there the gap opening up into turn four. Certes a little bit too wide, just not turning in as early as I should. We're going to enter high speed mode fast forward around that part of the lap you see the gap staying roughly constant I think the Aston Martin better suited to that second and third sector uh, this third sector is a little bit tighter a little bit more narrow or not more narrow which is a little bit tighter the corners a, a little bit tighter and the car can't quite uh, handle that as well and as it once again I lose out there so this is the situation at the end of lap 7, so quick maths of the day, 14 divided by 2 equals 7 at the end of lap 7 coming in for our pit stop and taking the entry rather nicely. Let's watch this pit stop in action at full or normal speed. Really good animation on this game. Uh, <clears throat> turn 10, sort it out. Anyway, pulling away from our pit stall good job by the Aston Martin boys thanks to the boys back at the factory ETC ETC so coming out in third place and one lap later resuming second and um, the gap's about the same so I don't think I've really gained too much there or maybe a little bit I think I've gained a tiny amount not too much 
Uh, the only thing now is that the Frenchman has newer tyres for the remainder of the race. One lap newer tyres. So coming into the final corner, this is lap number 10. I'm just beginning to push that a little bit too much. And there it is. It's going to come back to haunt us. Our excessive pushing. And we're going to spin around, lose second to the Dutchman as he goes through over the line. Uh, with four laps remaining. So I'm still in third. I mean, it's not a total disaster. But that is um, probably race ending in terms of our aspirations of winning the race. But you never know. Second place is still there. First place had a penalty. He has made a mistake before. He might make another one. So, I mean, in racing, you just have to kind of keep in there. This is one lap later, lap 12. And, well, I do exactly the opposite. I don't keep in there and I just... I'll keep the throttle down, that's what I do, and just go flying wide at turn four and lose a massive chunk of time. Um, and fortunes are going to change though, a couple of laps later. On the final lap, the Frenchman has spun out. In fact, he was second for a while there, so he's made a mistake. The Dutchman went into the lead, and now I'm back in second. So I could have definitely won this race if I had just stayed in second. Uh, but at this moment here, I was a little bit worried that that Frenchman was going to go for a mega lunge from a mile back. He seemed quite an unpredictable character. Going for the final corner, looking back, and he's just binned himself wide coming out. So he's third there. But I think, is he going to get pipped to the line? Yes, he is. In fact, look at that. He gets pipped by the Swiss guy uh, just before the line. So he was winning that, and far too many mistakes. He uh, ends, up, ends up in fourth. A similar story for me, I, I made too many mistakes, should have won it, finished second, but still up four positions, so not a total disaster, and I beat lots of the 911s. Now this car, the BMW M6, it used to be a very dominant car in this class, so I thought, what the hell has happened to it? Why is it not being used so much anymore? So I'm going to give it a try. Uh, this is the grid, I'm down in 14th this time. Um, what a load of BS, I can tell that this race might be a load of BS, but... Let's see how it goes. 14th. We're in the thick of the action. I think anything well inside the top 10 will be a really good result here. 14 laps to do once again. We know our strategy. Uh, just go all out and hope that we don't get a penalty, basically. That's rule number one. So the, the Dutchman, or sorry, the Belgian there, going all out, punting guys off. Good on you, mate. I'm going to try it around the outside of the Brit. Someone else spinning off. It's all going on on this first lap. And I think the Belgian there went for a weird move around the outside. Didn't really work and he's spun around. Green flag. That means that penalties are now going to be ridiculously given out in silly proportions. So you better watch out. True true fact that. So then 10th place. I've actually not had a too bad a start here. Gaining uh, four positions. Looks fairly racy up front with the Viper and the Beetle. But I'm stuck behind the Lexus coming through. Hawthorne's bend towards Westfield. Breaking between the two boards there, halfway between them both. And this is the weakness. We we can see it already. I'll get a penalty. I think I just tapped the back of the Lexus. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the green flag wasn't lying. He is going to dish out penalties randomly and stupidly. But there we go. So, the primary weakness uh, that I can see already is the, uh, the traction on exits of corners car just seems to want to oversteer that a little bit too much when you want to go on the power. Uh, so that is something going to have to be mindful of from here to the end of the race. So then into the first corner, Paddock Hill Bend. It's a good move up the inside. Someone else is off. So two positions gained. Two for the price of one. Thank you very much. Going to go defensive up the hill into Druids. And now we're up behind the very race. Beetle and Viper seem to be pushing each other for the best part of the uh, first lap and second lap. Look up the inside of the uh, Beetle. He gets a penalty as we just made contact. I think possibly for running the Viper wide out of uh, Druids. But it didn't look too bad. It looked just like good racing to me. But anyway, up into 7th. We've halved our grid slot position of 14. And we're going to look to even improve on that. 5th place is just around the corner. Not even, well, not even around the corner. He's just there. We're going to look up the inside into Westfield. The Viper put himself in quite a bad position on the outside. I'm going to take that opportunity to move up into my favourite sixth position. There we go. 
a little bit wide through the uh, through the sheen curve, just dipping two balls on the grass. We've seen that mistake being made very many times already um, in to in all my videos, but um, also in this video earlier in this video, a couple of guys did that. Just about keep it together though. Just get off the throttle, let the car recover, and then once you're in a straight line, then you know, get back on the power. So you know you you're going to lose time, and it's annoying to have to get off the throttle, but. It's better to do that than to, to floor it, do a Grosjean and spin around and wipe out half the pack and get a three place grid penalty. So it's about, uh, you know, lesser of two evils in many occasions. So then you can see there once again traction, uh, a little bit sketchy on the exit of Druids. Uh, not quite as um, good as I would like and that is exactly what I did not want to happen. On the exit, turn three, Graham Hill Bend. The car has just spun around on the kerb. Just a little bit too eager on the throttle. But I'm still turning. The car did not like that at all. And it's going to go round once again almost on the exit of turn four. The, the, the Beetle there. Uh, losing control as well. It's almost like synchronised spinning between the German cars here. But this is going to be one of those races. Um, I mean, when I make a big mistake like that, I'm just so close to just pressing that quit race button but I've learned my lesson already I think I did too many I did far too many rage quits and that's put my driver rating way down the order so I can't really afford to do that anymore I need to just stay in the race see what I can do it's still a long race it's only lap three we've still got lots of laps left to go so then a yellow flag what's happening around here ah we have a German spinning in his 911 so I'm going to go back up into 10th going to engage hyperspeed mode and travel through time very quickly so then going up the sheen curve the viper just dipping two wheels on the entry this time not on the exit and he actually moves over a very very polite move as I was coming up with a big difference in speed and he moves out of the way very nicely done so up into ninth position you can see the just around the corner there or just up the straight further up the straight and you see on the map um, the pack is fairly close ahead I mean the top three are long gone I don't think there's much chance of catching them unless you know they punch each other off get penalties always a chance of that but realistically we're looking at a top four and that isn't out of the question you can see the group ahead five cars immediately ahead of us so that is fourth place at the front of that pack that is an achievable aim by the end of the race which is now less than 10 laps away. It was still a good, you know, ten, more than 10 minutes of racing away. So we can definitely catch up. As we get a poor exit, you see I'm just tentative on the throttle coming out of that corner. She's still turning while you're getting on the power out of that turn four. And I'm gonna get on the power very slowly. The Viper on the outside, um, I decided not to fight that one. I think that was a good move. And I mean, I could have tried to push him wide a bit, but I mean, would have lost a lot of time my main focus now or our focus i want to work with this viper to try to pull pull towards this group up ahead i don't really care if i'm 10th or 9th i just want to get onto the back of that group start overtaking them and then get up to a higher position so i'll quite happily work with this guy in order to do that sometimes you're just forming in, forming sort of, sort of temporary alliances with other drivers you know, you might as well work together just for a couple of laps. Let's catch up to this group together, and then you know we'll fight out later. Because if we fight it out now, we're just losing time stupidly, and then we're be at best we're going to finish ninth and tenth. When we could easily get fourth here if we work if we work a bit more intelligently. So then, come down the hill out of Druids. Definitely just beginning to ease off the back of 8th place, or at least uh, the Viper is. I'm not having the best first sector. You see that the exit speed and um, not the best because I'm just I'm just fearful or mindful. And again, there, you know, <laughs> which way do you do it? Do you back off so much that you lose the speed or do you just go for it and then lose speed because you lost control? So finding that balance is very difficult. I'm looking for the outside. As these two guys get into a fight, there's not much space, and I, oh, it's a it's a very frustrating incident. I think I'm not sure if he was trying to leave me much space. He didn't leave me much space, um, but anyway, I mean, as a result, I'm down into 12th now. 
So my race is basically characterised by a yo-yo completely up and down throughout the entire thing so far. It's only been six laps, it's barely, it's not even halfway yet. But still, the gap isn't huge to fourth or fifth even. We could still do that. We're going to dip into the pit lane here, end of lap seven, go flying across the grass, get rid of a penalty and what, uh, watch this uh, pit stop in action once again. Let's fast forward the fueling bit. Uh, noticeably the car is worse on fuel compared to the Aston Martin so that is perhaps another weakness of this BMW now. So they do tweak like the overall power they do also tweak the fuel use so how much fuel the car uses so these things are tweaked constantly during the update and even one or two percent can make a big difference and uh, clearly uh, this BMW uh, just seems to have just been tweaked down far too much because it's not really used all that much at all when it used to be used very much before. But you see here, hostilities are going to resume um, as a, well, in terms of me fighting with all these players, but also me fighting with my ability to control the car. Another spin on the XF Turn 4. A couple of guys pitting, so a couple of guys opting to go one more lap. Um, uh, overtaking a few guys in the pit lane so a couple of these guys I will have to fight fight past uh, some of them might go into the pit lane I'm not sure so up into 12th the group's still forming here uh, so what are we looking at here it's, uh, 11th, 10th, 9th, 8th and 7th on the screen so and I imagine that a couple of guys have still got pit up ahead so that will bring the gap down and the group even bigger so kind of just minding my own business at the back of this group here at the moment and once again having trouble in the exit of turn four but by this point here looking up the back of the 911 the dutchman making a big spin through sheen curve i'm through on the exit just turn across into sterlings and they've got the job done just about and south african with a bit of contact uh, up ahead so i'm going to get two positions there it's always good to make two positions quickly and I almost lose control completely like I did in the Aston Martin. Lose one position, not good. So I gain two, lose one. Uh, and then lose one again, but then gain it back as he goes way too deep. So kind of opened the door for him. Gave him the invitation. He took it, but he took it way too hard. And just absolutely murdered himself. And the exit Druids, once again, uh, far too many mistakes creeping into the race here. Uh, it's still not over. You just see that group tantalisingly close. It's not a big, big gap. It is about three seconds, but with four and a half laps remaining and then so close, I mean, they're going to start fighting. They're going to lose time. That it's not, an impossible, it's not an impossibility to get back on track and get back into that fight. So the Dutchman, once again, going wide. I've got deja vu here because it's, it looks like a very similar battle as we come up to Sheen Curve. Looking around the outside, this guy gives me plenty of space this time. And he backs out just as I go around the outside. Sweeping around the outside. So nice stuff there. Back into ninth position. So we've got it all to do once again. As we now cross the line to begin the 11th lap. Four laps remaining. What can we do then about getting into this group? Well, part of it is just about making the most of other people's mistakes. Two people off there. Up into seventh. Always good to have an easy two overtakes there, lost zero time at all because they were ghosted, didn't have to lose time going offline so gained two positions, get, uh, lost zero time, good good stuff so now can I go up to the back of these two guys as they're battling the Brit very wide in the Viper we spent a lot of the race together and it looks like we're about to spend a lot more time together I don't tell my girlfriend coming through Sterling's and um, on the exit, once again, oh, the, the uh, Nissan GTI has been trailing me ominously for the last couple of laps. Just makes a big error on the exit. So he's long gone now. And my main focus is on really going forward. So I want to overtake that guy in fifth place, the German up ahead. But I do have the Viper in close attention. So I do have to kind of put one eye forwards, one eye backwards. It can be quite a difficult juggling act. You know, do you just keep sixth place? Or with only one uh, one and three quarter laps remaining, do I still attack and go for fifth? Uh, this is, I mean, these are the questions that a, driving, that a racing driver has to ask themselves constantly throughout a race. 
or if you're a Formula 1 driver, just let your team tell you what to do in many cases. Sometimes I do wish that F1, that, you know, the drivers had to kind of judge a lot of things for themselves, uh, but I mean, that's the way it is, I, I suppose. And like, once again, almost deja vu as the Viper is almost looking around my outside. He's going to switch to the inside and get late on the brakes to try and prevent him from overtaking. A little bit wide, going to spin out on the curb, come back across. He's on the grass and he's going to just resume behind. Now, a oh, very close incident there. I think just a racing incident. I mean, I just made a mistake. And unfortunately for him, he couldn't really make the most of it. He couldn't capitalise on it. So I'm going to remain in sixth. The bad thing for both of us, we've lost plenty of time. Fifth place is still pulling away. This is the final lap now, the last half of a lap. Oh, this is exactly what we want to see. And fifth place has caught up to fourth, who has a penalty. This is very good news for me. What is going to happen as we come through the left-hander of Sterling's? Oh, there we go. The Lexus is going to go very slow. And now the, the German's got a penalty. That one swipped, uh, swapped around very quickly. As we come through the final corner, he's going to slow down. He's got a penalty. And we're going to sweep into fourth place just before the line. Oh, my God. What a race. I could not even keep up. What the hell happened? I went forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Luckily, I ended up with a going forward. And I'm the first car that isn't a 911. So there we go. Uh, good good racing in the end. Far too many mistakes. The M6, a difficult car to drive, but it was a good race in the end. I do hope you enjoyed it as always, guys. Do sub for more. Smash the like button if you liked it. I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.